Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG, and today we're going to answer a couple of questions that uh, came about welding copper. Yeah, not only welding copper, this actually came from Pizza Welder. Pizza Welder wants to know, why would you weld copper versus solder copper? And I think that's a great question. So if you look at the, uh, the copper lines under your house, like uh, at, at my house, I did, I did sweat all these in. When I say sweat them in, I used a uh, little soldering kit like this. And the, and the solder has a melting temperature of somewhere around 400 degrees Fahrenheit. It takes a little paste flux and a little brush. So what I do is I, I clean up the, the joints, you know, and I'm getting ready to put this little slip joint in. I'll put flux on it and then I'll heat it up with a heating source. Now you can use any kind of heating source you want. Um, you know, a lot of times it's a little propane bottle. So what happens is that that, that solder is only a 400 degree solder. So if your application for this is other than for home use, you may want to weld it. Or you may want to use something like a silicon bronze. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to show you the difference between the two. And you go, well, why silicon bronze? Well, the melting temperature of this material is up around 1900 degrees Fahrenheit. Silicon bronze is about 1800 degrees. So you're not actually welding. You're getting real close to welding temperature, but it's a braze. And you've seen me do this on a couple of other programs. But I'm going to use this, this filler material. I'm going to use the TIG welding process, use this braze, do this joint, and then I'm going to use gas welding or gas brazing, if you will, with solder. So I'm going to show you the difference between the two. So let me, uh, let me get this cleaned up and we'll start off. And I'm going to use the TIG process first. Okay, now I've got the machine set up on DC negative. That's DC minus. Got a pointed tungsten. I, I don't have to put flux on here because I'm using argon. Argon is the shielding gas, or call it the flux, if you will. Now, the filler that I've got, sometimes it's known as Everdoer. Uh, it's silicon bronze is a generic name for it. Now, when I start to braze or weld here, I am very, very close to melting temperature of the base metal, but I never quite get there. Now, in copper, uh, take a look at the copper color now because you're soon going to lose that. It's going to get ugly and it's going to get smutty looking. Uh, what I see under the hood is I see this material floating out, wetting out to each side. So just know it's going to get ugly and it'll clean up again later. So don't, don't be surprised. And a lot of people don't like doing this because it does look so ugly in the beginning. So uh, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to, I'm going to go all the way around and keep rotating it until I do 360 and then I'll wire brush it so you can see it. Because I start coming around the uh, the full 360, I'm starting to pick up some surface oxides. 
it's okay to go ahead and wire brush those off. Okay, so that's all there is to this particular weld. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and wire brush it off while it's hot. And it'll get rid of just an awful lot of the oxides just by doing that. And uh, I'm, I'm gonna let it cool down before I start the other part. But um, come back and join me in a few minutes and I'll have this thing cleaned up so you can uh, visual inspect it and then we'll, we'll go to the other process where we're actually using solder. Okay, now I, I just finished the weld using this Everdoer filler material, and you can see there's really quite a bit of buildup, but it, it really does have high strength, and again, you want the high strength for high pressure. If that's what your intent is behind this, go ahead and use the Everdoer. If your intent is to just use it for you know, household purposes, just for water pressure and things like that, then uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. It's, it's, it's kind of funny, but... If you're a welder, a lot of people think you're a plumber because you know how to weld. And if you're a plumber, they think you know how to weld. So I, I guess you have to learn to do both somewhere along the way. I, I learned how to do this just because I had to. So here's what you gotta do. I, I got all the oxides off and I emery clothed the edges and it kind of scuffs it up a little bit. That's a good thing, scuff it up here on the outside. But you gotta get inside as well because what's gonna happen is that's gonna heat up in there. If you stick out oxides, it's not gonna take. Now, because I'm using a pretty archaic setup here, I, I got a rose bed. It's, uh, it's overkill in heat. Uh, this is almost like the Benford 4000 and you'll see when I light it off. I only need 400 and some degrees to heat this up to get the braze or the, the solder to actually flow. So what I have to do is I have to provide a flux and the flux is something that I brush on. So I'm gonna go ahead and brush it on and it's okay, you, you don't have to worry about putting too much on. It's not a worry at all, but the flux will keep the oxygen off and it'll give the solder a chance to flow. So I'm gonna go ahead and flux it here, flux it here. And you know, you don't have to hit the heat directly on where you're gonna braise. In fact, what you wanna do is you wanna go in just a little bit so the heat will pull a capillary action in so you have a, a larger joint that gets sweated. So you'll see me concentrate a little more to one side than the other. So I got the flux on all the parts. It's been roughed up. And again, can't put too much flux on there, so. But here's a, Here's the solder that I'm gonna use. Okay, so once I get the thing up to temperature, uh, then I don't have to stuff right in there. I just have to kind of add it at the, at the top here and capillary action will make it go all the way around. As far as you know, eye protection, um, you can use a full mask. You don't have to use a welding hood, but you do have to have about a number four shade. Uh, it's not, it's not, terribly bright at all. It's just, uh, you'll, you'll see a bright light, so you know, use your shades, use your safety shades especially. Okay, so I've got oxygen and the set line on this, and uh, like I say, it's overkill. It's gonna be much hotter than you need to do at home. You can buy one of these $10, $15 propane bottles and do the same thing. It just takes you longer. Um, look at that soot. Okay. Now normally you use this type of a, a torch to preheat a huge part. Um, I'm not going to have completely neutral flame, but pretty close. Okay, so, so here we go. And don't concentrate too long if you're going to use your rosebud.
<coughs> now that, that flux started off white and uh, it's clear now so is it hot enough nope not yet am I getting there very soon oh yeah I'm there okay now it's hot enough now as you start adding more all it'll do is it'll fill up that capillary area and then start dripping so it's actually done right now and that's just to keep you a little bit awake okay so again that is a melting temperature of about 400 410 degrees that is a melting temperature of about 1800 degrees so whichever one you like to do and, and you know that just by by sweating and soldering joints it's pretty fast you know so uh, just take a look at your application and uh, and apply this so pizza welder I just wanted to show you what the difference is and I want to thank you for writing into us so any of you that have a question on an application just let us know and thank you for watching TIG time I'm Mr. TIG. To stay up with the latest TIG welding technology and education, subscribe by clicking the button below.